Alaska, you may be performing a contract or a service outside the state. So if job creation is not necessarily a driving factor, um, then it perhaps would be then the dividends or other form of, of um, monetary incentive that could come back to the corporation that can go out um, in other in um, in other ways, such as um, scholarships or or social programs. Um, what's interesting to note is that SBA um, is interested in collecting that data, and as part of our proposed regulations, has asked um, uh, the corporations to identify what is the best method of reporting back to SBA the uh, benefits that accrue from participation in the 8A program. And so we're hoping that people have taken the time to respond because also the reporting requirements of a smaller uh, tribe or a village corporation in comparison to um, a regional corporation may be quite different. So what may work for um, one group or size of an entity may not necessarily uh, work for everyone. So we're looking at how do we measure that, um, what is adequate, and, and how can we tell that the benefits are in fact going back to the shareholders or tribal members. So Brad, you're nodding your head. Well, I, I think that the issue is, uh, it's, it's greater um, greater than that in, in some aspects. And, and we're talking to, I mean, focusing in on the aspect of whether or not there's a cohesiveness between the tribes and the ANCSA corporations. When these regional corporations were created, you have to understand that, that you know, there was over uh, 200, there's 229 federally recognized governments. And we're trying to regionalize, you know, multiple right. tribes into one region. And that would be, you know, similar if I went to Europe and said, France, uh, Spain, and England, you are now a regional organization. Of course, in each culture, there's differences that are very difficult to bridge that gap. So a lot of times, these ANCSA corporations just don't have the tools to take valuable tribal input from each one of the tribes that are supposedly uh, shareholders in, in that ANCSA corporation. And, and um, you know, and, and by dividing us in, into regions and, of course, um, separating us, uh, we, we've uh, we suffered greatly, I think, and, and it, uh, it's indicative, you know, where, uh, where corporations have, uh, have worked, um, you know, specifically against tribes in many cases. And, and these are, you know, we can illuminate some examples of that. But I, but please, I think that please that... Please do. Okay, where, well, where corporations are working <laughs> against tribes. Absolutely. A good example would be government-to-government -government consultation policies. Uh, currently, right now, we're, uh, Obama has issued a, uh, a memorandum to the 13 federal agencies to update their government-to-government -government consultation policies in, re in regards to Executive Order uh, 13175, which was passed in 1994 by Bill Clinton. The ANCSA corporations in, in many ways have been seeking to assert their control as government agencies and to remove that government to government consultation authority from the tribes. In essence, this is very bad for the tribal governments and it's bad for non-tribal government members as well because we allow for corporations in essence to have authority to consult with our federal agencies as governments. Yeah, which, which is quite strange. I mean, it would be like General Motors telling you this is how you're going to live your life on your land. You know, you, you, as an American, you would never consider that. But this is actually the, the, the situation here in Alaska. And I think it started with Senator Stevens working with uh, uh, some Alaska Native leaders, particularly from the corporation camps, to qualify uh, corporations as tribes for, pur for specific purposes, which set the precedent now to open up the door to some hybrid that I don't think we've ever seen in the United States, which is a corporation with governmental powers. That's unbelievable. It is, and we've got you know, a Supreme Court decision that just came up that, that gave them a lot more power now that they've got freedom of speech, even though you can't you know, give them the death penalty no matter what they do. And they don't die. Corporations don't, but now they're, they've got personhood. Uh, I wanna, we've got to take a quick break, and I think we're getting to the meat of it. I want to talk about how Senator Stevens uh, has had a, a large effect on the relationship between tribes and corporations. I also want to talk um, to you specifically about the allegations of corruption and some of the business partners that have come in with native corporations that are less than savory on pretty much any level, anybody you talk to. So we'll be right back with more up north. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, welcome back. And you missed so much over the break, I'm so sorry to tell you. I mean, we just had a great segment and you weren't here, but you could have been, you can come down to Bernie's 
bungalow at 5.30 on Thursday nights, and then, you know, giddy up, you'll be here and you won't miss a thing. Uh, I want to welcome our panel back. Uh, we just really sort of were hitting the meat of tribes, corporations, Alaska, I was born here, I can't get in. But apparently there have been some uh, shares sold off, percentages of subsidiaries. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, uh, you know, I'm not a serious shareholder. I was born after 1971 and I have not inherited any shares. Um, but very specifically, we do have uh, elders, and I've been counseled by members who've come into my office who are shareholders, and they told me, in this case about Siri, when Siri had sold a, a large percentage of its debt. And, you know, this process, uh, when, we're, when we're looking at it, it, it seems clear to me that, um, you know, these ancient corporations are not under the control of the tribes. You know, they're acting very much independently. And so uh, with, with Siri, there are subsidiary owners, and those are private corporations. And you know, this, is, this was an issue. Um, when, this, when this story was told to me, or when I was brought, this was brought to my attention, um, you know, I, I, I inquired on it, and, uh, and it was interesting. When they had sold that debt, they were, of course, they blocked the, uh, the knowledge of who had purchased the shares of Siri uh, for one year. And, uh, yeah, sadly, I feel at a disadvantage. I would have brought that, that case with me today. I thought we were going to get it just specifically SBA 8A. But it is interesting, you know, people talk about there's the illusion that the shares of these ancient corporations are specifically owned and controlled only by Alaska's indigenous people, and that's simply not true. In fact, there is, there's private corporations who own uh, shares in these organizations. So, Larry, can you, can you talk a little bit about this? Sure. I mean, have you, are you, has your corporation done this? Uh, where th there's a sell-off? Yep. Uh, it's, uh, and who's buying it? Uh, mostly big corporations are buying what they're, what they're selling off were uh, net operating losses, that all of these regional corporations and village corporations uh, sustained losses during the initial years of the, uh, of the development of these corporations. And uh, I think it was working with Senator Stevens that they, the leadership convinced them that we need to uh, get rid of these losses because many of these corporations were on a learning curve on how to run businesses uh, and they were making big mistakes. And they were learning from these mistakes and so they wanted to sell off these losses that are bought by big corporations that in turn use it as tax uh, cuts right. uh, from their from the profits that they make. So that's the way that it worked. And in fact, it did help shore up a lot of corporations that were, could have gone bankrupt. And of course, the significant part of that point is that if they went bankrupt, uh, their major asset is the land. And you don't want, you know, non-native outside corporations working strictly for business, uh, owning these lands. That was the biggest scare. That danger still exists today, you know, if corporations go bankrupt. Uh, it's very possible to lose the land, which is the major asset of these corporations. Well, which was the entire point of its, it was the entire point, was, wasn't like, uh, okay, here's some, you know, nasty smallpox blankets and some beads. It was, look, you're going to have land, you're going to have an asset, you're going to have a place at the table, you are going to have a mechanism that you can be involved in, in this sort of westernized uh, corporate world. And, and, and to me, in looking back at that, I think that, I, I hope that that wasn't a nefarious decision. I think it was maybe a way to sort of push everybody up instead of saying, okay, go live on the reservation. But what happened with that, and can you talk a little bit about Senator Stevens' involvement in mm -hmm. this? Well, I, I don't know whether or not there were elements during that time that were nefarious because uh, the threat even today of, of tribes with sovereignty and having uh, Indian land under their control gives them basically, you know, absolute control of what happens on those lands. And of course, I think there were big business interests that didn't want that to happen. Uh, so I'm sure that they were involved in influencing the direction that this thing went, where we had an option, only basically two options, a, cor a former corporation, for profit, or uh, develop a tribe in a reservation status. And of course, at that time, everyone was hearing about how destitute all the Right. Indian people are in the lower 48 on, on the reservation, so they didn't want that. But at the same time, I don't think anyone really knew what corporations really meant. 
uh, when, the, when it was, for, when it was adopted as an option. Uh, you know, corporations, uh, if you look at the corporate structure today, I think most Americans are beginning to see what folly it is to follow this kind of a corporate uh, structure which is based on basic, essentially greed and, and wanting to hoard, creating scarcity in the world and destroying all the world's uh, life support systems. I mean, it's not the direction to go. Uh, I think native corporations are caught in that paradigm, but there's no legal uh, structure to allow them to uh, move out of that paradigm or find some kind of a, a hybrid that protects the culture and protects the, the way of life. Right. 